welcome to Once More With Feeling Christmas special episode. First time ever. This is like one of the only albums we actually care about. Yeah, we actually have a Christmas album we care about, even though it came out in October. But fuck it, doesn't matter. It's Warmer in Winter by Lindsay Sterling. It's a first Christmas album she's released, as far as I'm aware. Um, I think she has done a bunch of live covers and stuff like that. With some of her lives. I think there was someone posting a bunch of quite obviously recorded from live clips of her doing Christmas stuff. Mm. But I don't think she's actually released anything until now. Uh, she's done it on her SoundCloud or Bandcamp or whatever the fuck she uses. Uh, uh, YouTube. Oh, that's all I know she uses. Um, that's why I find out about her, yeah. She, I think she has got a whole bunch of stuff up on there of covers that she hasn't released on that album. So if she's got any Christmas stuff, it's probably on there. Mm. I've actually not looked that much outside of her own stuff, apart from the occasional video game cover. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, studio albums, discography, there's only four albums and this is one of them. So, um, Even though she's she's released a ton of covers of various songs and all that sort of thing. I'm just wondering if it's like a kind of of best of cover material thing at some point. Yeah. Um, But anyway, yes, so she's released a Christmas album, sort of like... 90% 90% of it, I'd say, is covers. Well, is that, what, 15 tracks in the regular version? Or is it 13? I can't remember. It's a really stupid store-exclusive fucking tracks. Fuck. Yeah, it's 13 on the normal version, 15 on the Target Deluxe Edition. Why? It's like, that's worse than buying something from a specific country. It's like something from a specific fucking store. Why? Yeah. It's not even the first time she's done this. I remember Brave Enough had bonus tracks on Target as well. Yeah. So, for fuck's sakes. I mean, we don't even have a fecking Target. Well, I suppose it's the same thing in a lot of her stuff. Like, oh yeah, you can only watch her, like, documentary thing she released recently if you have a YouTube Red description in America. What really frustrates me with this whole deluxe edition thing is one of my favourite songs on the album is one of the bonus tracks. Yeah, I mean, it's not like Paradise Lost where the bonus track was one of the ones. At least that was actually just a regular special edition that was available alongside the the usual version. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I've got no problem when that's the sort of setup. It's like um, when Death Magnetic came out, the special edition which had like a half a dozen extra songs. That was three quid more. No problem. We can have normal version or bonus tracks version. Doesn't matter where you get it from, either is available. No problem with that. Same with Ramstein. You had bonus track version and normal version. Judas Priest. I, the list goes on. There are plenty of bands who've released normal edition Hell, even Steel Panther. We panned that album, but we at least got the bonus tracks, and one of the best songs on the album was one of the bonus tracks. I've got a pattern here. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I will, if I like an album or like a band, I will try and pick up the special edition, usually. So. Yeah. You should get nicer packaging as well. And like bonus booklets and shit like that. Yeah. I mean, with Metallica, I didn't pick up the special edition version because that was the album immediately after Saint Anger. <laughs> so it's sort of like, if this is like Saint Anger, I'm not willing to have six extra tracks, which are awful. <laughs> I do generally try and listen to an album before I pick it up, in most cases. Not every case. Mm. There are a few, um, few artists I do trust enough to be able to pre-order. Yeah. But it's not hard to find music these days. It's easily streamable, it's easily on YouTube, it's not hard to you know, find someone that has the album in some cases. Even. Yeah. I mean, that's, again, that's what makes the whole bonus track thing so ridiculous. Um, anyway, shall we actually get onto the album? We <laughs> that was the. We, we, I think we're done with uh, bitch at the record label hour. Well, if it's the present hour, if we isn't, it won't even be the record label spot. But whoever it is, you're a dick. Stop it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's a. It's a Christmas album. Yeah, it's a Christmas album. It's very well done covers of standard songs. Some that I, I mean, some of them. It's sort of like yeah, you would expect that to be covered, like Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. I would have been shocked if that hadn't been covered. Especially from Lindy, yeah. Yeah, but one that I really wasn't expecting. So have anything to do with Grinches? Yes. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. I had to say the title because I can do the voice. The thing is, on retrospect, I can see it doesn't surprise me considering what Lindy's like, but I still wasn't expecting it at first. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those, wait, well. Okay, I've got no problem with this. I just didn't see it coming. 
Um, there are a lot of featuring credits. That one features Sabrina Carpenter on vocals. I've never heard of her before. Uh, I haven't heard of any of them other than um, the guy from All Time Low, who I know vaguely. Sometimes to fall in love. Uh, Which I know I've heard all of Nicole Foster was by All Time Low. I'm not a huge fan of them personally, but all right. Um, yeah, All Time Low. Take them or leave them. Unfortunately. Time to fall in love. Well, okay, I'm going to address the elephant in the room because if I don't, people are going to comment on me slamming these songs unreasonably so. I do not like crooner or doo-wop music at all. I mean, Nat King Cole, Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra especially... All that sort of music and all the doo-wop stuff just really, it rubs me the wrong way. So there's a bit of a problem there because the three original tracks on this album, which are... Um, Time to Fall in Love, Warmer in the Winter, Christmas Come On. Yeah, all three of those, I don't like them. Uh, Warmer in the Winter, I'm more okay with. I think Warmer in the Winter is the better of the three. Yeah, personal. Yeah, but it's one of those, if you consider them on a personal rating basis, bear in mind, this is not a they are bad songs in their own right. This is a I do not like that genre of music. So the chances of them scoring well are very low. I mean, I'm glad to see why it's like that. It's simply because that kind of music is quite often associated with Christmas. Once again, Mike and Cole being Crosby, <laughs> Tracks and Oscar, no, all very much well known for doing Christmas stuff. Yeah. Well, of most other things. Yeah. But yeah, I just, I don't like that sort of music. So on a personal rating, sort of like Warmer in the Winter would be a two out of five. Christmas Come On and Time to Fall in Love would be on a one out of five. Or a scal- scalpel being stabbed into my thigh out of five. Actual... Actual events. Yeah. Here's the thing. I didn't deliberately do that. It was just one of those jeans are a thin material and I was intending to just do a poking myself and then... <laughs> ah! Here we have a man who hates Dewop so much he would actually stab himself in the leg with a scalpel. <laughs> the thing is, it doesn't actually hurt. It just aches slightly because it's into the muscle. Yeah. <laughs> There's a benefit of scalpels as they have also very thin blades. So. Yeah. Which went straight in, straight out. Yeah. Um, but, hey. <laughs> we started talking about the uh, structure of Edwin's leg. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, it's very similar to every other one person's leg. <laughs> Except more hairy. <laughs> um. uh, self-mutilation aside... Um, if I was to... <laughs> now, there's a phrase you didn't expect to hear in this show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if I was to score those songs on a not personal basis, I guess I'd give them a three out of five because structurally they're not especially stand out, but they're not actually terrible in and of themselves. They're just not for me. I think it's a, you don't like them, but that doesn't mean that they're objectively bad. Yeah. It's possibly the most potential thing you could even say, but hey. <laughs> it's another one of those... It, it's like when we've reviewed post-metal and it's sort of like, well, on the one hand, I don't like it, but on the other hand... It has merit. Yeah. And the covers are excellently done. Some more so than others. I mean, Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy is a personal favourite. Of course, I absolutely love the original, so it's it would be a bit weird if I didn't like, you know... Violinist who I love, covering a song I love. It would be weird if I if that wasn't a personal favourite. Um, Carol of the Bells is also an amazing one. Um, we Three Gentlemen, it is up on YouTube, so listen to that. It's amazing. It's not just We Three Gentlemen. It's a medley of various other songs as well, and it... It's really very cleverly interwoven. Um, some songs I, I didn't really have much to say on other than I like it. Like O Come Emmanuel, again, bonus track. Yeah. It's really frustrating that so many of them are bonus. Well, there's the two. 
Well, it's really frustrating that those two are bonus tracks. Um, I saw three ships. That that I really liked. Um, no one understood that to me, actually, is um, what charge is this? Because, well, it has near the end, it's super late. Mm. Well, the whole sort of sweeping building progression, and you kind of get sort of a blizzard feel going on from it. Though no orcs or undead and no alliance or horde. <laughs> I was about to mention Porkwap. I knew if I didn't, you would, so I let it slide. Well, it would be weird if the WoW addict didn't mention it. <laughs> Um, but it it goes through swells and come downs. It's sort of like you go from the blizzard into a sort of safe, warm, calming hearth. And it's very good with how it just builds and falls and all that sort of thing. And ow, I just hit myself with the lamp. It's not a I guess. <laughs> I think one of the most important things about this, though, is that whilst, you know, all songs are recognisable as their original forms, it's also you can, it's kind of got its own kind of twist on it that she's put in there. Yeah, it's one of those cases of whilst you know that they're covers, it's all recognisably Lindsay. You wouldn't be able to say, oh, this is just like any other person doing Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy or All I Want for Christmas or... Yeah, that's a cover. <laughs> I don't know the little kind of derision in your voice, though. Well, okay, I don't like the original. This I can tolerate more. Then again, I can't stand Mariah Carey, so... I don't think I've ever heard you talk about Mariah Carey, but I just had a feeling that you wouldn't like her. Eh. Uh, <laughs> she's like the modern... It's sort of like, I don't like Kroona and Doo-Wop, and she's kind of like the modern-day version of it. I wouldn't say she's that modern anymore. She's kind of ancient. She's not that old. <laughs> it feels like she's been around for a while. Well, yes, she's been going since the 80s, but whatever. I saw the fact that, despite everything, Maria Carey's official year of birth is still not known. Born March 27th, 1969 or 1970. <laughs> yeah, they don't know which year it was. Okay. Nobody knows what year it was. Maybe she doesn't. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking through um, Sabrina Carpenter... And I can't see... Troy Disney. Yeah. There's nothing that we've covered and nothing that we've mentioned to each other that she's featured on aside from this album, so... I can imagine Lindsay, considering where she came from, I can imagine her just picking up a bunch of relatively unknown, relatively niche artists to work with her. Yeah, I mean, you've got Becky G, Trombone Shorty... Uh, Trombone is a good name, at least. <laughs> I, I will admit that was actually what saved Warmer in the Winter for me, because I do like a bit of trombone. I like brass in general. When it's done right, it sounds really nice. Mm. I think that's one of the reasons why I don't like crooner music. It's like jazz horribly watered down and all the passion taken out. <laughs> and I like me some jazz. Jazz is good, yes. Although, I do like a bit of rockabilly, and that's kind of like the evolution of crooner, so I don't... Go figure. Uh... I think it says poos to crooner. What? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I'm very careful. Crooner seems pretty dead. Mm -hmm. As a genre, I mean. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it, I feel like it sounds like we're really coming down on a lot of this album, but I did enjoy it. Yeah, it's, it's a solid album. I mean, I'm not hugely one for Christmas music. There's a reason why the only Christmas album I even own is the California cover one, and will probably eventually be this as my second. And probably the only other one I'll ever buy, because I'm not a huge fan of it. Yeah, unless Cradle of Filth releases a Christmas album. Come on, Cradle of Filth! Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! What? C come on, Primus. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> yes! I want to... Primus and Cradle of Filth collaboration! I want to hear it! <laughs> I was a Cradle of Filth through Christmas covers. <laughs> Someone make that happen! Sometimes like Death of the Sugar Plum Fairy and uh, <laughs> What Satan is this? <laughs> All over Christmas is a ritualistic suicide. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, overall, it's a solid album. Um, you might like the original songs, you might not. It really does depend on how much you care for Crooner and Doo Wop, that sort of thing. Uh, um, if you do like Crooner and Doo Wop, then you will like those songs. If you like me, then you can just skip them. So it really is a... Well, you're coming checking it out anyway, you might find something you like either way. Yeah, I mean, I I'd say, as it stands, it's sort of like Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, 
You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Uh, I can't help but say it like that. Carol of the Bells, Angels We Have Heard on High, I Saw Three Ships, Oh fuck, it's the Irish, they want their pots of gold back. <laughs> so, in fact, most of them. Yeah, I, I think the only ones I I give a pass are um, the three originals, because we've already said why. Um, all I Want for Christmas is a bit meh. Make it the original, though. Yeah, take it or leave it. It's better than the original, yeah. Um and Jingle Bell Rock is a bit meh. I quite like it personally. It improves in the latter half of it, but personally I'm a bit take it or leave it. But, you know, that's five out of 15 songs. If we do the full, I mean, you'll probably look it up on Spotify or YouTube or Bandcamp or SoundCloud or wherever it may be. So, you know... On the normal version, that's 5 out of 13. So you've got 8 solid songs, in my humble opinion. If you're more of a fan of Christmas music, then you'll probably not find anything bad at all, I guess. Yeah, and on the deluxe edition, that's 10 songs. I mean, that either way, you, you do have a full album's worth of songs that are really good. I think the only downside, I would say, is that most of the tracks are very short. Yeah. I mean, the longest is 4 minutes 22 seconds, and that's Angels We Have Heard on High. Yeah, it's a long... It's a long... Well, it's unfortunately, uh, a lot of Christmas is also one of the longest ones. Yeah. Mariah Carey dragging things up. <laughs> but none the more for that. It's an enjoyable enough album. Um, make sure, you, if you do hate Crooner and do WAP, don't have any sharp objects nearby. <laughs> You should decide to just mutilate your own limbs. <laughs> but anyway, overall score for the album. Uh, I personally so slightly three point five. Um, I'd go slightly lower. Th- I'd say a solid three. Um, it may grow on me. Um, there are certain songs that I would say like I do keep coming back to it, but it's because I really love it and the video for it is amazing. Um, Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, I would actually give a 5 out of 5. Possibly a 6. I think, in general, yeah, I mean, because neither of us are particularly big fans of Christmas music teams. Yeah. It's actually good to have a Christmas album that I can actually listen to and like. So, it's only the second one ever, I think. Yeah. It's only because, you know, it, I think more of my favourite bands are just you know, do Christmas covers, because it might actually make Christmas music tolerable. Actually, technically, I could be facetious and say technically three, because there is the Cult of Luna one. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, there's a good stuff. How could you forget about that? You were going on about it for ages! My mind works in no ways. <laughs> this is what retail work does to you, folks. And this is why I'm trying to avoid it as best I can. Uh, yeah, overall, this is a solid album. If you like Lindsay Sterling, it's definitely worth checking out. Lindsay especially it's not hard to get hold of, so you can check it out for free if you want. And if you like Christmas music, definitely check it out. It's got a, there's a whole bunch of good covers in here. Some stuff you'll know, some stuff you might not immediately recognise because you don't listen to Christmas music or classical, I don't know. Plus, maybe you like the new stuff. I mean, if you like Bing Crosby, I can imagine you're probably liking the original stuff as well. Mm. Can't really go wrong if you have any interest at all in either Lindsay Telly or Christmas music. Yeah, I mean, if if you are a big fan of Christmas music, and I know there are plenty of people who are, then this is definitely a worthwhile buy. Um, it would be good to hear it replace some of the stuff that is frequently on the radio. But I've still not been caught out. Oh, I don't know what the name of the song. There's one song that plays every Christmas that is absolutely atrocious. Which one? There's one that's specifically awful, and like three times more than any other one. Um. So one where it's like, he walked 2,000 miles, like, that's really quite far, as one of the lyrics. It takes a singer about half a second, half a, half a minute to sing that one line because it's like warbling and trying to sound like a lawnmower, I guess, half of that. So a Mariah Carey song. Might be Mariah Carey, I don't know. Oh, it could be worse. It could be the Justin Bieber Christmas song. I actually don't know that was a thing, and mm, Christmas is cancelled. <laughs> yes, it came out a few years ago. It's called Under the Mistletoe. Why am I even saying what it's called? No one should know. I still prefer the idea of, you know, if someone tries to get closer under the mistletoe, you have to just fight them to the death. Batlift fight. Someone just tagged it as mistle- mistletoe. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd challenge someone to a batlift fight. 
I mean, that's how I'm going to decide who my best man is if I ever get married. <laughs> well, one of you is the best man, the other one's a dead man. <laughs> First, you have to know how to battle the fight. I don't think any of us do. I do! Yeah, but you can't be your own best man, Ed. Why don't you clone yourself? Which case you might. What if the challenge is you have to beat me to first blood? Then you probably won't have a best man. There's a lot of dead friends. <laughs> it's only first blood. That just means I nick you on the arm. How do you know all your friends aren't secretly anemic? <laughs> Admittedly, with a batlith, it's very difficult to get that sort of nick. Uh, okay, first person to get the batlith under the other person's throat is the winner. That's... Because that's generally how you do bloodless batleth combat. Why do I know this? And why am I going on about... What about... How is this anyway related to Christmas? Once more with batleth. <laughs> where's all my... Where's this Maria Carey but sung by Klingon instead? <laughs> well, there is never going to give you up in Klingon. So, come on, someone who knows Klingon fluently, sing a Mariah Carey song in Klingon. Uh... Anyway, um, oh. Don to the sugar pom Ferengi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the most off-topic conclusion to a video we've ever had. <laughs> uh, Carol of the Borg. <laughs> I saw three starships. <laughs> oh, what Cardassian is this? <laughs> I am, I'm having way too much fun with this. <laughs> Oh, oh, for all you DS9 fans, you're a mean one, Mr. Garrick. That, I was about to say you're a mean one, Mr. Lacutus. <laughs> Q Continuum, we have heard on high. <laughs> your Cucumber Manual. <laughs> oh, anyway. Enough about the oh, Star Trek month. Good stuff, good stuff. Anyway, yes, goodbye. We should probably stop talking about Star Trek now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry about this brief descent into madness. Check this album out. Uh, it's available everywhere, especially Target, apparently. Yeah, it's been available for far too early before Christmas. And... It was like the 26th of October, something like that. Uh... Which is far, far too early. Oh, the 20th of October. So, yeah, we have actually deliberately been waiting to do this review because it's sort of like, we can't do a Christmas album outside of the Christmas month. That's just ridiculous. It is silly. I refuse to listen to Christmas music outside of December, other than when we force to listen to it. Yeah, I mean, Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy you can get away with because that doesn't. I never really understood. Actually, no, it is set around Christmas, but whatever. I like Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. So where's my Christmas song featuring Bruce Willis? <laughs> All for Christmas is a machine gun. Yippee ki yay, motherfuckers. Anyway, yes, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> um, this will be the last review for this year um, next review will be Avatar Country which is out on the 12th of January and I've pre-ordered the album um, and uh, I won't be there for that because I will be flying out to Japan on the 13th of January it will be somebody else well that's okay I'll just find someone who's really into power metal you probably know a good dozen people that are so yeah well, power metal slash a melodic death metal, etc. Anyway, no more for that. Uh, Farewell. Yeah. Merry Christmas to all and to all YouTube sucks. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Yeah.